This is Muramasa's Entertainment and ROM board. You'll notice the different sections of the board. First, the right side, which is uh, the PRG chip. The left side, which is the CHR chip. The, this corner right here, the little corner right there, this is the security chip, the AVR CIC. Only necessary for original hardware or the front loader. The worst C1 is a capacitor, which is going to be a 6.3 volt 22 microfarad farad capacitor. And the top thing is very important because it's what's going to be known as the mirroring, mirroring, which we are going to see later on when we start preparing the ROM. Now, basically, as you'll see here, when you do prepare the ROM, there'll be two chips. All NROM games can um, have two chips, a PRG and a CHR. We're just going to use a program to prepare them or split the, the file into two, the, the NES game, the ROM. And you're going to place one here and one there. Notice there's 28 pins here, 14 and 14 on top, same there. Once these are all populated with the corresponding chips, again, PRG, CHR, security chip if you're not if you're playing on original hardware front loader otherwise not necessary the capacitor and the mirroring then everything should be set to be played on the back nothing spectacular you'll notice that it's just the logo please use this board responsibly um nothing major nothing wow just a little solder points you're going to be using to make sure everything's in place and there is one thing i need to move i need to demonstrate nothing wild nothing major this one's version 1.01 the ones he's selling now I'm pretty sure is 1.02 in fact I got one here they're basically the same type of board the only difference one of them is black I'll be honest I like the black color a lot it's just so sleek but the green one oh I actually do, did like the green one more for some reason but they're both the same, nothing changes. You notice the type of chips, the mirroring on top, the security chip, and the capacitor we're gonna be using. Now, uh, once we now, now we've seen the board itself, uh, now to the next step of the, the video. Which is the different types of chips used. Now that we've seen the Muramasa board, the Enron board, these are the chips that are going to be used on the board itself. Your, there are three types I'm listing here. The 27C128, which is the one, these two right here. The 27C256, which are these two here. And the 27C512, which are these at the bottom. All of them are 28 dip pins meaning there are 14 pins on the left and on the right. Also keep a note of this little notch, that's the orientation of how the, uh, the chip goes when you're recording and when you're putting it into the board itself. For the most part though, you're going to be focusing and using these on top because NROM games, either be NROM 128 or NROM 256, don't use um, 64 kilobyte, at least from what I've seen. And there might be one weird one around there, but for the most part, these are the ones you're going to use. The 128 is 16 kilobytes, and the 256 are 32 kilobytes. Um, basically, it depends on the game. You could use either one for CHR or PRG, but these are the ones you're going to be using the most. Welcome back. Now that we know the fundamentals of the Enron board, and now what we're going to do is take an NES game or a file, an NES ROM, and prepare it in order to be made a repro of. Now to prepare the file and split the file into two particular files of a PRG file and a CHR file. The game that's going to be used for this demonstration is Space Invaders. There are many programs you can use in order to find the corresponding info and to prepare the ROM. And, but in this case, I find it easiest just to use Famirom. We already have it here inside a folder. Folder. Let's open it up right here. Oops, I'm my bad. Right here. And what we see here is the program activated and load IPS, which is just to patch a ROM that's not needed now, and load ROM. When we load a ROM, we're going to be seeing a series of information pertaining to the ROM itself. In this case, since we're going to be using Space Invaders, 
which is right here. I'm just going to drag and drop it right on top of the program. And we're going to see certain information which is very important for the creation of the Rebro. First thing is that obviously it's an NES game. And that notice here, it's telling me that the original PRG size is, a, is 16 kilobytes or 120 kilobits. And the CHR size is 8 kilobytes and 64 kilobits. The program is going to split the NES game into two files, a PRG and a CHR of these corresponding values. Okay, very important. Now, the, there is a problem here. Notice, ha, notice that down here, it gives you the same information. Plus, it tells you what type of chip it should you should be using to make it compatible and make it work on the Repro. However, even though we already know the 27C128 will work on the board, on the Muramasa board. However, the CHR will not because it's a 2764 and it's not compatible with that type of chip. So what do we do? All we got to do is select the, the, the one that's not compatible and jump to the one that is the next pot the next one which is a 27c128 you click that and basically it's gonna do two files and you need those two chips in order to create the repro it's a way to make it compatible since the board is not compatible with certain chips that way you can find a chip that is compatible and write it there so we see that we're gonna be having uh, two chips a CHR and a PRG and we're gonna be using the 128 uh, EEPROM but there's something else before I forget that's very important and it's something called mirroring it's not really important what what it is in particular but keep note of what it says it says horizontal it could also say vertical but in this case it says horizontal this is very important because otherwise if you choose the wrong option on the board the game will have difficulty either playing it won't load or just gonna be glitched up remember horizontal is very important you can also verify information about the the game on the website and in NES card database and we have it here Space Invaders this is the address if you want to go directly to it and notice that it tells you the PRG sizes for each so it's basically a 24k game and what we're doing is convert this CHR from from one chip to another so it could be compatible with the board Notice it's in a zero mapper and notice once again horizontal. Remember horizontal is very important on the mirroring. This is only for NROM and other boards and not all the boards you have to do this. Anyway, going back, now that we chose 120 for each one, we click split. Once that's done, you're gonna where are the files? They're all in here. Double click here, and you'll notice two new files on here, 27C128. CHR and PRG. Remember, this is the chip we're going to be using to burn each individual file. Okay? And basically, you're wondering what this X2 means. You just duplicate the file twice so you can fill up the whole chip. No worry, nothing is going to happen. It's going to work fine. So, what we do now with your program of choice, you can burn each EEPROM into each corresponding chip, and then we move on to the next step, which is soldering. Now that we have prepared the Space Invaders ROM and split it into two types of files, a CHR and a PRG, we're going. I'm going for the sake of this tutorial, burn each one into its corresponding um, EEPROM. Remember, the EEPROM to be used for both is 127C128 for the PRG, and the other one was a CH for the CHR, another 27C128. The program of choice, or the burner of choice I'm going to be using is the GQ4X4. It's right here in the program. We're going to open it up. I already placed the chip into the into the socket of the, pro, uh, the reader and the writer. Don't worry, that's of a different type of ROM I was making before. Um, what are we going to do first, because I was using, trying to do a uh, Super Nintendo game, as seen here. It worked perfectly, but anyway, that's for another time. Um, we're going to choose the device in this case. The device is basically the chip you're going to be using to burn, which is what again? 27C128. In this case, we choose D for device. We choose EEPROM. You notice a list of manufacturers. In this case, if I'm not mistaken, let me check again, it's an AMD. So we go all the way up, we choose AMD, and the chip says AM27C128. 
That's what it says. So you go down the list, AM 27128. In this case, I'm noticing this right here. There's two of them right here. AM 27C 128. Then you select that one. It's checking to make sure it has the correct information to burn on the chip. Perfect. Now I'll be honest. <laughs> um, I have not tested the chip. I'm gonna just do a blank check to make sure that the chip is blank and good. Because sometimes when you buy these, especially from eBay and from China, and most of the times they work perfectly. Other times you have to um, erase them using an e a UV light. And there are other times in which the chip is just pure crap. But let's see if everything is okay here. He's doing a blank check. Thankfully, the chip is blank. It's okay. That's perfect. Here it tells you the orientation of the how to put the chip onto the, the rider. Remember, the notch, the little circle thing in the middle, goes upward. Starts from the bottom, up. That orientation. And once you put it in, you have to close the lever in order to make sure that it... Um, it seals up because otherwise it won't. It may not write perfect uh, correctly. Anyway, now that we chose the device, we're going to choose the file. We go here to open. Then we go to Famirom. Don't worry, the fact that it says Super Famicom. I remember that was me doing um, another game before. We're going to choose a bin, binary. Here are the programs. Out of, out of how should I say? It's my thing. I always do the PRG first, then the CHR. So I double click on the PRG, 27, 128. Leave this alone, says bin, click OK. The file is ready and the device is ready. Now I'm gonna click on auto mode, which is going to write and verify afterwards to make sure that the chip wrote correctly. Just click auto mode and just let it record. Pretty quick considering the the size of the ROM and that's it it verified now immediately we need to block the little window of the UV of the I'm sorry of the chip with tape otherwise it will be prone to damage because of the UV light um, right now the Sun is down it's at night time so I'm not worried too much what I am gonna do is take out the chip label it as a PRG which is the file we burnt and now put in a new chip of the same type. Okay, I'm gonna all those out. PRG one corner. The next one is CHR. I'm gonna put another one in. Okay, make sure it's okay. You always have to make sure it's aligned perfectly. Otherwise, it will not work. Okay, there. Now remember, we did the PRG. Now we're gonna do the CHR. You can open. CHR, the one that says times two. Remember, it's just the data duplicated twice because it was an eight kilobyte. Kilobyte. Okay. Same thing. I'm gonna just click auto mode. I should have checked to see if it was blank. But yeah, it's blank. Otherwise, it would have been writing. Now it's verifying. And you're done. Both chips are done. And now it's to the soldering part. And that's pretty much it. The Repro Space Invaders is complete. PA, PRG on the right side, CHR on the left side, no security chip since I'm playing this on the Chrome console, the capacitor, which I'm pretty sure has to do with the CRC, but eh, I just place it anyway, and the mirroring. Remember, we said horizontal, but we made sure that we put solder between the first and second pins to make contact and make a bridge between both, very important. And you can see, oh yeah, before I forget, remember the notches, remember? The, 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 the little diagram, the notch on the right, notch on the right. Same thing here. Notch on the right, notch on the right. And so you can all see my excellent soldering skills, which are crap. Here they are. Took me some time because I just take my time doing these things. And no contacts are touching each other, which is good. It looks as though each one had a good amount of solder. Although, like you, like you can tell, it's not great, but I'm okay with it and the capacitor solder and that's pretty much it now the most important question will it work we'll find out right now see the game works perfectly um remember i'm using the retron hd console to hdmi it's a clone console obviously i place the pcb with the chips facing me all nes reproductions will always have the pcb facing toward you 
or toward the front of the console, making sure that the chips, uh, the piece, the, the EEPROMs are covered with any type of tape or any sticker to prevent damage from UV radiation. Also, ensure, like I said before, all the parts are completed. Slowly insert the, the PCB into the test unit, and there you go, it works perfectly. Um, that's pretty much it regarding the, the re reproduction. Uh, this this was for the NROM tutorial for the NROM board. Um, next up, I'm going to be doing tutorials for the CNROM and UNROM boards of Muramasa as well as others. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was very informative. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know about, uh, below. And if you like this video, click that like button, it really helps a lot. And yeah, have a wonderful day and see you later guys.